It's time we started uh, solving differential equations. Uh, this is the third lecture of the uh, term, and I have yet to solve a single differential equation in this class. Uh, well, that will be rectified from now till the end of the term. Uh, so, once you learn separation of variables, which is the most elementary method there is, the single, I think the single most important equation uh, is the one that's called the first order linear equation, both because it occurs frequently in models, uh, because it's solvable, and uh, I think that's enough. The, if you drop the course after today, you'll still have learned the most two important methods, separation of variables and first order linear equations. So what does such an equation look like? Well, I'll write it in, uh, there are several ways of writing it, but I think the most basic is this. I'm going to use x as the independent variable because that's what your book does. But in the applications, it's often t, time, that's the independent variable, and I'll try to give you examples which show that. So the equation looks like this. A, a fun some function of x times y prime plus some other function of x times y is equal to yet another function of x. Obviously, the x doesn't have the same status here that y does. So y is extremely limited how it can appear in the equation, but x can be uh, pretty much arbitrary in those places. So that's the equation we're talking about, and, and uh, I'll put it up. This is the first version of it, and we'll call them purple. Now, why is that called a linear equation? Uh, the word linear is a very heavily used word in mathematics, science, and engineering. For the moment, the best simple answer is because it's linear in y and y prime, the variables y and y prime. Well, y prime is not a variable. Well, you'll learn in a certain sense it helps to think of it as one, not right now perhaps, but think of it as linear by analog the most closely analogous thing would be the equation, uh, an equa a linear equation that looked like a real linear equation, the kind you studied in high school, uh, which lo would look like this. It would have two variables and, uh, I guess, constant coefficients equal c. Now, that's a linear equation, and that's the sense in which this is linear. It's linear in y prime and y, which are the analogs of the variables y1 and y2. Uh, a little bit of terminology. If c is equal to 0, it's called homogeneous. The same way this equation is called homogeneous, as you know from 1802, if the right-hand side is 0. So C of x I should write here, but I won't. That's called homogeneous. Now, this is a, f a common form for the equation, but it's not what's called standard form. The standard form for the equation, and since this is going to be a prime course of prime course of confusion, <laughs> which is probably completely correct, but a prime source of confusion is what I meant. Uh, the standard linear form, and I'll underline linear, is the first coefficient of y prime is taken to be 1. So if I divide you can always convert that to a standard form by simply dividing through by it. And if I do that, the equation will look like y prime plus. Now, it's common to not call it b anymore, the coefficient, because it's really b over a. And therefore, it's common to adopt a, yet a new letter for it. And the standard one that many people use is p. How about the right-hand side? We need a new letter for that, too. It's c over a but we'll call it uh, Q. So when I talk about the standard linear form for a, f for a linear first-order equation, it's absolutely that that I'm talking about. 
Now, you immediately see there's a potential for confusion here because what did I call the standard form for a first order equation? So I'm going to say not this. The standard first order form What's, what would that be? Well, it would be y prime equals and everything else on the left-hand side. So it would be y prime. And now, if I turn this into the standard first order form, it would be negative p of x, y plus q of x. But of course, nobody would write negative p of x. So Now, it's, I explicitly want to say that this is a form which I will never use for this equation, although half the books in the world do. Uh, in short, this poor little first order equation belongs to two ethnic groups. It's both a first order equation, and therefore its standard form should be written this way. But it's also a linear equation, and therefore its standard form should be used this way. Well, uh, it has to decide, and I have decided for it. It is, above all, a linear equation, not just a first order equation. And this, in this course, this will always be the standard form. Now, well, what on earth is the difference? Oh, if you don't do it that way, uh, the difference is entirely in the sign of p. But if you get the sign of p wrong in the answers, uh, is just disaster from that point on. A trivial little change of sign in the answer produces solutions and functions which have totally different behavior, and you're going to be really lost in this course. So I, uh, maybe I should draw a line through it to indicate, uh, please don't pay any attention to this whatsoever, <laughs> except that we're not going to do that. OK? Well, what's so important about this equation? Well, number one, it can always be solved. That's a very, very big thing in differential equations. But it's also the equation which arises in a variety of models. Now, I can, I'm just going to list a few of them. Uh, all of them, I think, you will meet in the, either in part one or part two of problem sets over these first uh, couple of problem sets, or second and third maybe. But uh, of them, I'm going to put at the very top of the list uh, I'll, what I'll call here, I'll give it two names, uh, the temperature diffusion model, model. Uh, well, that's I'm sorry, it would be better to call it temperature concentration uh, by uh, analogy. Temperature concentration model. There's the mixing model, which is hardly less important. In other words, it's almost as important. 